Welcome, both of you. Thank you so much for being here. Of course, uh, Saudi and Qatar are the um, pioneers in this um, railway industry in the Middle East. We'll start with Mr. Saad Al Muhannadi. Of course, uh, we have the uh, World Cup 2022 uh, coming very, very soon. And uh, of course, there's a lot of expectations. Um, a lot of people are looking towards Qatar. So what kind of challenges and difficulties have you faced in trying to achieve this milestone? And how is it different from other, uh, other uh, railways being installed around the world? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, as you may be stated, um, I think we have um, keeping, uh, as I stated, first of all, our uh, rail, our metro uh, project, it is uh, initiated before uh, host, uh, or announcing hosting for uh, Qatar for the World Cup to 2022. But the, the benefit, to be honest with you, for uh, hosting Qatar 2022 that keep accelerating the, the process for the rail. And uh, so to be honest with you, sometime uh, which the, the normal procedures to take, especially for the land acquisition, take no, normal procedure two years, we here in Qatar Rail, with, with the uh, higher management stakeholder uh, uh, involvement, it is we success to uh, uh, achieve this within uh, eight months. I think uh, there is a huge, uh, there is a lot of challenge, but in the same time, there is a commitment from higher state to make a priority for the, the most important project to be delivered on, on Qatar by 2022. And we deliver this project uh, on time. There is a close coordination. There is a committee chaired by uh, His Highness, the Emir, and uh, meet uh, every uh, by annually and to report to them uh, the progress for the, 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 the project. Uh, I think... Uh, uh, the World Cup, it is give a more challenge for us, but at the same time, it is facilitate a lot of issue for uh, Qatar Rail to be expedited and to be delivered on time and to avoid uh, wait or delay the, the project. Thank you very much. Now, I have a question for the, uh, for the both of you. We'll start with Mr. Hamad. Now, the, um, the, the uh, rail market here has been called the most promising in the region. So what's driving this expansion, Mr. Hamad? I think we're a little bit late, uh, but Saudi Arabia have started uh, earlier, a couple of decades ago, with a very small link. Uh, I think it is promising because there is a lot of, especially when it comes to Saudi and linking the GCC, uh, there is a lot of freight flowing uh, back and forth. Uh, in the region, we are uh, a lot, uh, we are behind, uh, and we are investing heavily uh, to catch up, I guess, yeah. Um, what are the challenges that the uh, Saudi railway uh, company has, uh, has faced and why has there been a delay for Saudi in particular? I think uh, the project that we have floated and uh, tendered, we are not late on. Uh, we might be a little bit off, but there is, the projects never come to be on time. Uh, the Saudi uh, vision have came uh, to connect a couple of areas that has mining areas in the north that was complemented by passenger and freight. I think the mining industry in the north have initiated or triggered uh, the railway to come to light. Also, uh, needless to say, that the GCC also uh, are committed to link. And uh, as far as passenger, I think we only have uh, the high speed in Haramain, where is, is it? Uh, it's really neat because there's a lot, a lot of uh, people visiting Mecca and Medina, a lot of Muslims. So that's uh, also it's ongoing. Uh, freight transfer from uh, Red Sea to, to the Gulf is another trigger to have railway. Uh, and let's hope we deliver on time. So the question is for you one more time is, um, uh, you mentioned that, uh, I'm sure you'll discuss this in your speech later on, but um, what would be the priority? Was it, is it the freight or is it more the, uh, the, um, the railway that is related to the Hajj? I think, the hajj? I think uh, related to Hajj, is, is, it's the most important. You have millions of people coming in a specific time. Uh, it's a couple of weeks that you have uh, a high peak, high end. So I think uh, passenger, as far as passengers, it is the most important. As far as freight, 
everything is important when it comes to connecting borders. Fantastic. Thank you. Back to Mr. Saad. Now, uh, we also want to talk about the, um, some of the challenges you faced uh, meeting such a, an important deadline. And aside from that as well, uh, we want to know also as well what measures have been taken to make sure the project is consistent with local and international laws and conventions. Uh, thank you for your question. And uh, just uh, I need to comment for uh, Mr. Um, I, I, agree, I fully agree with him. Maybe the project is late. But I think uh, the trend now in all GCC country uh, related to uh, promote and to implement uh, a plan to, uh, for either uh, rail or metro for passenger or for the fleet, freight. There is, a, I am sure, um, and based my meeting with um, the GCC country committee, there are, in each uh, country here in uh, GCC, they have their own uh, plan uh, to implement uh, and to uh, expand the, the network uh, requirement for uh, the, the, the rail or metro or the freight. Uh, the resistance from the higher state authority in the previous was rejecting this idea from beginning, but I, I am sure at this stage now there is um, uh, acceptance from, from the higher state authority and I think now the trend uh, in, in all the GCC country to uh, expand the, the, the rail uh, in all aspects, either light rail or heavy rail or uh, for the freight. Regarding your question uh, for uh, the challenge, uh, I consider this uh, especially for the metro project here as maybe 1,000 project in one project. Uh, we, are, um, we are not working in one island or one uh, free area and we build our uh, project. We are interfere with all the utility uh, in all Qatar, around maybe 27 uh, organization or, develop of, or developer or utility who are interfere with them due to the huge uh, length for the, our network. Uh, this is, a key, this is a, the main challenge, but in the, in the, in, in the other ways, we are already established um, a coordination committee uh, chaired by, uh, chair by, chair by each chairman of, the, of, the, of each utility to the member for this uh, committee, and there is, a flu, uh, there is a smooth coordination to facilitate the coordination for the, the work and to avoid do the task twice. And sometimes we expedite our project or we, sorry, we expedite our activity or delay our activity in order to ensure integration between our project and other utility project. I think this is the first, first thing. The second thing, I will be honest with you, recruiting people. As I stated, now the market in GCC uh, toward the rail Every country have uh, it is a plan for the rail uh, to recruit the right people to uh, yani to hire the right people. It is a challenge for us. However, we have also planned for for this. And <clears throat> sorry, the the last thing I think, as I stated, the logistic requirement. As you know, Qatar uh, land it is relatively small, and uh, there is a, a logistic challenge to ensure. <clears throat> to ensure uh, implementing this project with the minimum impact for the citizen and for the people living uh, in Qatar. Uh, regarding uh, implementing the international uh, standard, uh, we hire the more, uh, uh, international consultant uh, like uh, Barson Brikov and uh, Deutsche Bahn, which is they already aware about all the uh, uh, requirement, standard requirement. And also, there is close coordination with our colleague in GCC to ensure we have same standard in order to uh, have integrated uh, rail and uh, integrated, sorry, network to be able to be work in Qatar and same thing work in other uh, GCC country. I think there is close coordination. This is considered in our mind and sure. Uh, and I think the most important thing, we already now award for ISA who's independent safety uh, officer uh, from at this stage to ensure that we already uh, implement the standard required in order to be able to operate in 2000, uh, October 2019.
Fantastic, thank you. I'm glad you mentioned the, um, the safety aspect of things and uh, I will turn the question to Mr. Hamad. Uh, what quality control measures have been put in place to ensure that you know, the, the railway system in Saudi meets the highest standards? We started with, uh, first of all, driving the ARIMA standards. We have substituted it because it's a heavy haul railway that we were operating. Uh, when implementing the packages for contractors, we have driven uh, quality standards from the U.S., a little bit from uh, the European standard when it comes uh, very specific. Uh, having this in place, I think we have invested a lot of time in putting those packages before floating in as far as construction phase, as far as quality in terms of operation, because we are an operating company in the end of the day. Uh, we, are, we have just started the operation of the mineral line. Uh, we are uh, implementing a quality uh, plan. There is a lot of bugs in the beginning because we were in the pilot uh, year. We, uh, we are, by, the, by now we are ending our second year of operation. Uh, and I think uh, the plan is going uh, pretty, pretty good by noting out the bugs that we had in the beginning. Fantastic. And I think there's a question that a lot of people here would like to ask as well as um, uh, what tenders uh, would people watch out for between now and the years and months to come? Okay. Uh, the North... Go ahead. I think, I think you have a lot of tenders. I don't have that much. <laughs> we have already... We are now we are handing over from contractors. So if you want to, we can give you the lesson learned, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, we'll start. We have, uh, we have the North-South Railway project. This is at completion. Uh, complementing the North-South Railway in the e eastern side of Saudi, we have uh, Jubail. Jubail is an industrial city. Uh, Jubail is divided into three packages. Uh, Ras al-Khair Jubail. Ras al-Khair is, uh, is also a new industrial uh, it's a, it's a uh, process facility for Ma'adan, which uh, it's a company that processes uh, phosphate, bauxite, uh, caustic soda, and a lot of other uh, minerals. Uh, so this is the, the first connection is Ras al-Khair Jibail. This, is, this was tendered and commenced uh, third quarter of the past year. And then we have the Jibail Dammam. This is also under tender. I don't think anyone could get any luck with it. But Jubail internal network, however, we are uh, under the DTL design, and we are uh, estimating that we will hopefully uh, float the tender mid, mid, mid of 2013, or third quarter, to be more precise. And then in the north, uh, our client, Ma'adan, we are transporting mineral too. They are developing a new mine facility, process facility in, in the northern region. It is. 100 kilometer away from where we are, we are, we are now at the north. So that would be what we call northern branch line. So it's a branch line from the existing north-south railway. And then we have the land, Saudi land bridge. Saudi land bridge, it's uh, 950 kilometer, double track. Uh, detailed design will be awarded soon. We have tendered the detailed design. Uh, the PMC have been awarded. Uh, Having the PMC and the designer within a year time, we will hope we will have announcement of packages, pre-qualification, and so on. However, there isn't any packages defined uh, as we speak, but for sure there will be a couple of packages to be tendered. Fantastic. And now moving to uh, Qatar, Mr. Saad, uh, what tenders should uh, people look out for, watch out for? Uh, I think in Qatar, <coughs> as I highlight, maybe only the tender close, it is the underground uh, uh, package. This is only a close from the civil point of view. Other uh, packages is open, and there is a lot of potential and opportunity for all the uh, contractor or manufacturer. Uh, we are, as I stated, we are planning to float uh, by April uh, for rolling stock and system for the metro. Uh, and even uh, later on we'll, uh, for uh, track work, uh, we are also planning to float it in this, uh, in this year by uh, August 2013. Uh, there is also a big opportunity and a huge opportunity for MEB uh, contractor and manufacturer uh, 
uh, to cable with the, with the, uh, with the, the consortium for the civil construction. Uh, there is opportunity in long distance on the freight for the detailed design, for civil construction, for uh, system and hydraulic stock. Uh, also for light rail, there is opportunity for the WSP. Uh, I, th <clears throat> I think there is a huge opportunity in Qatar for uh, all the aspect and all type of the rail. And uh, we are welcome all the uh, manufacturer, contractor, participate and we encourage them uh, and urge them to uh, study Qatar market and to have uh, uh, at least a local uh, part, a local uh, uh, partner to ensure uh, the smooth for information to deliver for them uh, on time. Uh, there is opportunity, but the main thing, if you don't, as I stated, if you don't move fast, this opportunity will be catch by other uh, party. Thank you very much. I will now move the, uh, move the questions to the floor. If there's anyone who has any questions, gentlemen in the middle, if we can. Uh... Thank you. Thank you so much for the interesting presentation, uh, Mr. Saad. Uh, indeed, I was uh, delighted to see that you have uh, what you call targeted recruitment. Uh, Qatar has very ambitious uh, you know, public transport, metro and railway, as well as definitely Saudi Arabia. And within the GCC countries, you're talking about an investment of a minimum 150 to 200 billion uh, US dollars, and a network of at least maybe 10,000 plus kilometer of railway and metro projects. With that, you are competing for the same resources, you know, not only regional, but also international. And there is a delicate balance between when to retain these resources, especially to build the skills and capacity needed, not only for the development of the projects, but actually more important during the operation and maintenance for sustainable development of the railway sector and the metro projects in the GCC countries. In your vision and your strategy to have this targeted recruitment, you know, there will be a lot of challenges to be able to hire the right staff for the right position, not only that, more even challenging, to be able for them to adapt to the local conditions and also adapt the international experience for the very special requirements in the GCC countries. How do you see that moving in your overall strategy for hiring, replacement, and recruitment in light of you know, what we call the nationalizing of the railway industry in the GCC countries? Thank you, Doctor, for your question. Uh, as I stated, maybe the most challenge to hire the right people uh, to deliver this project. Um, we have a plan, we have an initiative uh, to mitigate or to um, overcome this challenge. And, and as I stated, we have a plan, inshallah, by April we'll have a, a recruitment campaign in different country in the world in order to uh, recruit and hire the, the, the right people. Same time, we have also agency, recruitment agency, we deal with them, international recruitment agency, we deal with them for the uh, headhunting and to ensure that we uh, recruit the, on time the right people. Uh, to be honest with you, the staff here in Qatar, our project maybe they work 20, uh, 20 hours per day due to the overload. And this is a, a, a challenge for us, and uh, we are trying uh, to recruit people and hire them. Uh, but at the same time, we need to recruit the right people. Uh, and uh, this is uh, a challenge, I think, for Qatar, and also a challenge for other organizations and, and GCC country. Uh, but in the end, we have a plan to implement that, and we hope uh, this plan will uh, success and will achieve our goal. Other... Um, uh, sorry, alternative to uh, get these people through our uh, consultant, which is the B BMCM consultant, which is highly international, or through SBM, which is Barson Brickov or Dochaban. There is uh, a clear uh, plan, but also there is also alternative in case there is shortage for uh, this plan. I hope I answer your question. Uh, okay, thank you. 
Thank you. Do you have any other questions? Perhaps for Mr. Hamad, lady in the front. Assalamu alaikum, uh, Dina Kamal Yusuf from uh, Gulf News. Um, a quick question for both you gentlemen and uh, replies in both cases. If you can let us know, um, uh, especially Mr. Saad, how many people you're planning to hire in the long term to complete the, the project and also the overall cost of uh, the projects that are uh, underway for this year. Sorry, your sound, the question not clear, your the, sound not clear. I believe the question was about the number of people you are, you will be recruiting to complete the project and the estimated cost. The and estimated cost for the total projects that are uh, meant to go underway this year. Uh, we have a pro budget for 35 billion US dollar for all the projects. Uh, we are, uh, we have now uh, the current staff around 95 uh, person in Qatarail. And we are planning to recruit uh, or to reach for the by, by end of this year 360. Uh, uh, as I said, our approved organization structure it is 480, but also we have a plan and we are realistic. We think we would not be able to recruit these people within a year, and we make a priority for which people we need to uh, hire them, and we have clear manpower planning to achieve. Uh, this uh, target. Mr. Hamad Al Yusuf, the same question to you regarding the recruitment, uh, number of people to be recruited, and the uh, estimated cost of the project. Well, the estimated cost of the North South Railway, I think we have spent at the border of 20 billion riyals, which equates to 4 point, four point some billion dollars. Uh, as far as recruitment, in the beginning, the company started as uh, overseeing the implementation, so we didn't really need a lot of people because we have a lot of consultants, uh, so it's, uh, it's more of uh, managing the project as we were acting as a PMC at some point for the North-South Railway. As far as operation maintenance, which are we going to, uh, we have uh, hired about 400 people. We have subcontracted uh, maintenance with our, one of our contractors. Uh, we estimate uh, a border of uh, three to 4,000 people to operate the North-South Rail Railway. That includes passenger stations, uh, intermodal yards, uh, and uh, loading and unloading facilities of uh, our clients. Also, the operation meaning the crews of, 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 of the train itself, and in our OCC in Riyadh, which is the operation center. Fantastic. Do we have any other questions? Uh, we have three, maybe we can, lady in the front. All right, um, Anita Bays from City7 TV. Um, Mr. Saad, you said that you have a potential revenue of 38 billion, and that's over the next two years. Um, you're sort of pushing for Qatar to encourage localization, you said. However, you will be looking for contractors possibly outside of Qatar. Um, has there been any interest from the UAE at all? Unfortunately, the, the sound, either my ears have a problem or the sound system, there is a problem. Can you repeat your question? Uh, can we just repeat uh, the question and maybe because just, uh, just move not clear. the uh, microphone a little closer? Thank you very much. Um, so, Ad, you said that you've got a potential revenue of 38 billion uh, US dollars over the next two years. You're encouraging localization for the Qataris, obviously, but at the same time, um, it is open um, for sort of contractors for outside of Qatar. Um, has there been any interest from the UAE at all? Okay, so the movement towards uh, uh, the, uh, the hiring local talent, I believe to work uh, for the Qatar Railway company. So has there been any interest from the UAE? Is that the question? I think the question about the opportunity for 28 billion US dollar in 20 years. I'm sorry. Now I didn't hear your sound at all. <laughs> sorry. Can we hand over the mic again? Um, not so much the recruitment side, but more the, the investment opportunities and business. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank the investment you. opportunity. The investment opportunity, as we stated, we already hired McKinsey, and there is around uh, 28 billion uh, US dollar uh, potential revenue. Uh, and uh, as I stated, this is um, a split or spirit on all the product cycle uh, from construction up to uh, commissioning and uh, even facility management in later stage. Uh, there is around 104 opportunity 
uh, it is uh, uh, proven from uh, our uh, consultant it is uh, feasible uh, it will be uh, this opportunity will be present in detail in a workshop in Qatar by uh, by this month and it will be present for our local local investor and even at the same time and even this message if there is anybody want involved for this a workshop, please send your request through info at qr.com qa and we will communicate with you about the exact date for the uh, the workshop. I repeat again, email info at qr.com dot qa. Uh, uh, there is uh, this is one for uh, this 104 opportunity, uh, mainly uh, related to the infrastructure and also. Maintenance and uh, and operation. Um, as I recall, there is um, uh, opportunity for uh, steel uh, and also opportunity for the uh, glass uh, and uh, other opportunity even for there is uh, um, the uh, charge up or or car surface which is uh, to be charged in the in the station and to be used uh, to the by by customer and return back to the station again. Uh, more detail for this opportunity will be present in our workshop and uh, all body will come to attend this uh, in order to ensure uh, the, the add value for their participation. Uh, and as I stated, this is come from the vision and from clear instruction from higher state authority that they are intended or they are need to localize a uh, factory in Qatar. There is a huge facility uh, in Qatar, like example, to give us uh, any land for the factory, to give uh, subsidized electricity and water, and also the other uh, legalization. And even uh, we are participate with Qatar Development Bank. There is a um, fund scheme uh, to encourage the investor to uh, build their factory for small, medium uh, in Qatar. Thank you. I think we have time for two more questions. Uh, we can have the gentleman in the middle. We will get back to you. Good morning, uh, Khalid Al Ahmed, uh, Saudi Ramco. My question to Mr. Hamad about the ongoing projects and specifically the metro projects in Saudi Arabia. We read a lot on the news about uh, Riyadh Metro, Jeddah Metro, and so on, but we never hear any details about how will that impact the passenger vehicles that uh, and the, the traffic jams that our cities are facing these days, and how will that replace passenger vehicles? What's the forecast for travel miles, uh, passenger travel miles, as well as the uh, domestic energy impact uh, for the kingdom? Can you can you give some information about that or about your plans and how will that substitute uh, passenger vehicles probably in the morning commutes? Thank you. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, we at SAR, we don't deal with Metro. But I will, I will answer your question being in the business. Uh, Riyadh Metro is run by uh, Riyadh Development Authority. Uh, it's, a, it's a government sector. And what I hear in the news and what I see in a couple of committees that we are a member of, because we are a member of a number of uh, railway committees in Saudi, I think they are implementing. I think they are moving forward. As far as the Mecca metro, it's not under our uh, uh, control, nor we have any idea about how they are implementing the internal railway. We focus on interstate railways and heavy haul and passenger from uh, city to city rather than in-city transit. Fantastic. I, have, I think we have time for one more question. Yes, gentlemen? Actually. Actually, I don't have a question. It's just happened to be two comments. In fact, following up on the lady, if you look at the railway and metro projects in the GCC country or anywhere in the world, 60 to 70 percent is traditional civil work. And the region have extremely good and will advance experience on that. So they really are not looking per se for the international experience. The left 30%, which is the skills needed, required for the specific sector in the railway, this is what we are looking for to target, to bring to the region. I think the challenge here is that winning between the international experience with the local 
whether engineering, construction, and even supplies for the civil war, which is a significant part of the project, and how to make that twinning successful. This is what we are really facing as a key challenge. On regard for the metro, because we are a little bit involved in that, in fact, these are massive you know, public transport projects. They're looking at adding another mode of transport to the existing modes of transport. And for the Riyadh metro and public transport projects, it is expected to be awarded within the first quarter of this year. So you're talking about maybe another month or two, you should hear the award of the packages to start you know, construction.